as a Christian, what do I think I'm doing when I'm in the laboratory? Well, we read in the Bible that God sustains the world. So if God sustains the world, um, that means, that doesn't mean that God somehow um, got the world started and the world's kind of running on its own and every so often he goes in and fixes it. It basically means if God were self-sustaining the world, the, the, it would no longer exist. That's the kind of classical Christian idea of theism. Right? So the world is, is dependent on God. So if God is sustaining the world at all the time, then what does it mean when I'm studying the laws of nature? Well, the laws of nature, they're not laws like the laws of, of legal laws that are telling nature what to do. They're descriptions of how nature works. And they're describing the regular ways that God sustains the world, so the ordinary ways that God sustains the world. And that's historically how people thought about science. There's ordinary ways that God sustains the world. And most of the time, God sustains the world by the normal laws of nature. In the Bible, we see examples of points when God sustains the world in different ways, like um, when he turned water into wine in a wedding in Cana, or most prominently when he raised Jesus Christ from the dead. But what's interesting is to look at the way those miracles are described. So in the New Testament, for example, there are three Greek words that are used for miracle. One of them means basically uh, a wonder, Okay, which is how you, we tend to use the word miracle, like a wonder, amazing thing. The second word is a, is a work of power. The number of the third one is semula sign, which means a sign. And the second two words are always used with the wonder. So miracles are never just a wonder that God does for some, to amaze people, but they're always done as a work of power, as a sign. So they're done to further God's redemptive purposes in this world. So God normally sustains the world by these regular ways, and occasionally, if he wants to, he intervenes and sustains the world in a different way, and that's what we call a miracle. Now, if I'm a scientist, I can't, by definition, study these things we call miracles, or when God sustains the world in, an, in, in a way that he doesn't ordinarily do, because I don't have access to the mind of God. I can't, it's not a, a variable I can control in my experiments. And if one of my students comes to me and says, you know, I did this experiment and a miracle happened, I, I, I'm going to be a skeptic about that. And the reason I'm a skeptic about it is because I, I, I'd be surprised why God would want to, want to sustain the world in a less ordinary way in this particular experiment. Um, and that's, you know, I can't see what the, the point of it would be. In other words, within Christian theism, there's a very robust explanation of what science actually is. It's studying the ordinary ways that God sustains the universe. And surely, if, there, if God is the God who sustains the world, without whom the world could not exist, it's not very hard to sustain the world in a slightly different way if you so want to and so need to. Right? So th these things are not at all contradictory. Um, they're just a slightly broader way of looking at the world.